Game developers have to think of tons of different situations that a player could cause in a game that are out of the ordinary, but they don't think of all of them. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 20 things developers didn't think anyone would try. Starting off with number 20 in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the easy guardian stalker kills. Obviously, the devs didn't see this coming. It's an easy exploit that makes some of the most dangerous enemies in the game total pushovers. Uh, you know the giant guardian robots that stalk around pretty much everywhere in Hyrule, mostly around ruins, but you'll find them from time to time in different areas, particularly playing dead. That's always a fun one to stumble upon. They look like they're disabled, but then you get close to them, they spring to life and get to fire in their laser. It's an old meme, but it checks out. Uh, these guardians can be dispatched easily. You just use stasis on them. If you do it while they're pretending to be dead, then instead of getting frozen like usual, they'll just fall through the ground and instantly die. These things are supposed to be incredibly deadly, but they're rendered complete chumps with this simple trick. And number 19 is Doom, the 2016 reboot. Doing extra damage with the weapon wheel. Another one of those ridiculously easy tricks that can't be intentional in the first Bethesda published Doom game. You have a weapon wheel that slows down time when you open it up. Simple enough, right? It doesn't have any effect on weapons that do damage over time, except for one, the BFG 9000. You fire this thing and immediately open up the weapon wheel to slow down time. The BFG shot is going to continue to do damage while being slowed down. And by the time the shot disappears, it could easily do three times as much damage as it would normally. Pre-patch, it was even more powerful, something like 10 times as much damage, but even in its current weakened state, three times as much damage is still a lot, and makes it so you can take off a pretty big chunk of a boss's life bar with very little effort. At number 18, a classic Grand Theft Auto San Andreas holding square while riding a mountain bike. Why this happens, I don't know, and I'm talking about the PlayStation controller, obviously, but you hold down square while tapping X, and CJ's body will get all screwed up and twisted with elongated arms and weird effects on him. Only happens in the PlayStation 2 version of the game, might I add. So Rockstar managed to patch it out with later releases, but the trick still works in the PlayStation version. It serves no practical purpose, but it's bizarre and very fun to screw around with. And number 17, using dog meat to open any lock in Fallout 4. Master level locks in Fallout 4 require you to have pretty high lock picking skills to unlock them, or you can just have a dog. The first companion you meet is good old dog meat, who is so good at fetching, he can literally fetch anything, even if it's behind the most complex locking mechanisms. A and don't question it, it's dog meat, he's a good boy, right? All you have to do is bring dog meat with you to a master level lock, use the fetch item command, and he'll automatically grab whatever's nearby. That means you can get the cryomancer from the first vault, which is supposed to be a thing you come back for after dozens of hours, within minutes instead. And number 16 is Hogwarts Legacy. You can, we're going to call this just fly away. Trolls are some of the toughest enemies in Hogwarts Legacy, but uh, they've got one fatal flaw. They're dumb, like dumb as hell. Normally each fight, one of these guys is supposed to be a grueling and dangerous battle, but don't bother with that. Uh, just get their attention, jump on a broom, and watch as they just follow you over a ledge to their immediate deaths. Getting the timing right can be a little tricky, but getting too far away from these guys and they'll just chuck rocks at you. But otherwise, it's really easy to clear out the trolls that developers probably didn't expect players to do because it's almost too easy. At number 15 is Grand Theft Auto 4 driving into a swing set. Yeah, the world of this game is a dangerous place, but the most deadly things in Liberty City are the swing sets of doom. Known as the swing set glitch or the launch glitch, there is something extremely wrong with the physics of the swing sets in this game. If you drive into the wrong angle, you'll just suddenly find yourself careening through the air halfway across the city. I mean, getting it exactly right can take a little bit of practice. Sometimes driving into these things just crushes your car or sends you flipping back into a brick wall at 100 miles an hour. But if you're lucky, they will shoot you across the map in a way that is just baffling. The best part about it is that Rockstar never patched it out. You can still do it, and it's just as glorious as it ever was. And number 14 is Metal Gear Solid 5's airmail attack. Outside of the box thinking is one of the big fun things about Metal Gear Solid 5. It enables a lot. But this trick is clearly one of the few things that was not intentional because it was eventually patched out. Originally calling a supply airdrop wasn't just useful for restocking equipment. It was also a deadly weapon. It wasn't that useful for taking out patrolling guards, but great for stationary targets like snipers. Early on in the game, you fight the sniper quiet, which is supposed to be this tense thing where you have 
have to sneak up on her, but using this method, she becomes way, way easier. Just one hit from a falling box is enough to end the mission. Getting the positioning right can be a little tricky, but with a little bit of practice, you can end the mission in literally seconds. It's a shame they patched it out because it's one of the best tricks in the game. And number 13 is Resident Evil 4 switching guns while aiming. Uh, we're talking about the original game here, just for clarity's sake. Known as the Ditman glitch, probably one of the most infamous tricks in all of Resident Evil 4, and pulling it off is surprisingly easy. All you have to do is get a striker shotgun, quickly open up your inventory, and switch to a new weapon. You have to do it pretty quick. If you see the laser sight coming out of the striker, you're too late, but it's not all that difficult to pull off once you get the hang of it. If done correctly, Leon will start doing absolutely everything faster, about 1.5 times faster, so stuff like reloading, using a knife, moving around, it's noticeably sped up. It's essentially a speedrunner trick that uh, you're not really a speedrunner if you don't use it, because wow, does it really speed things up. It also makes the game a lot easier when it's active, and all it takes to do is a specific shotgun and some moderately tricky timing. And number 12 is Dung Pie Protection in Dark Souls. In this game, there is a mostly useless item called a Dung Pie, which is exactly what it sounds like. You can throw it at enemies, and it'll build up the toxic effect on them, which can be incredibly effective in certain situations, but there's a major drawback. You also get toxic buildup every time you use one. Toxic's basically like super poison. It does tons of damage and is an all-around nasty status effect, but here's the thing. It could be worse. One of the most annoying sections of the game is a place called Blight Town. If you don't know Blight Town, you haven't played this game. But it's this miserable hanging shanty town that's dark, confusing, and filled with these infuriating enemies that use blow darts to inflict toxic on you. It makes this place miserable to try to explore, but certain players figured out an easy counter to these guys. It, you just give yourself toxic from the dung pies, which for some reason do way less toxic damage than if you get it from the blow dart snipers. Basically, it's kind of like a vaccine where you slightly infect yourself to build up protection, and it's a pretty handy little trick that sounds counterintuitive, but can be incredibly helpful for getting through this infuriating section of the game. 11 is Half-Life 2, standing on something you're holding. Uh, in Half-Life 2, the player could hold a small flat object underneath themselves and jump repeatedly. Since the object is basically treated as a platform and carried objects are held at a set distance, you could use this to hover over sizable parts of the level when done right. It's since been patched in Episode 1 and Oddwords, but it's still a vital part of the Half-Life 2 done quick speedrun. I mean, this game revolutionized the way games use physics, but it was not perfect. Case in point, this whole thing. At number 10, Tomb Raider, the Angel of Darkness, accessing a secret unused tutorial. Uh, this one's just bizarre. Part of it's intentional, but the rest, uh, uh, well, we'll get there. Angel of Darkness was an infamously broken game at release, and this is a fun glitch that's a good example of that. If you use a level select code and use it to replay the first level, for some reason you can climb this ladder that normally ends the level without getting the required key first. That's not the interesting part, though. Normally, that's where the level ends, but if you're playing the level this way, it keeps going, and you can see a big piece of cut content that they just left in the game. It's the entire tutorial, which, for most games, cutting out a tedious tutorial section will make them better, but for this game, a lot of this actually feels pretty essential, and it's never explained to the player in the real game. Most of the time, accessing cut content is a chore, but with this, all it took was a level select code. The devs on this game must not have had a lot of faith in this one, so they didn't think anyone would want to replay the first level. At number 9, the original Red Dead Redemption turning dynamite into a heat-seeking missile. Apparently, this one's pretty well known, but in all my years of playing and replaying Red Dead Redemption, I've never noticed it. The trick here is incredibly simple. Anyone can do it. You grab some dynamite or a fire bottle, activate Deadeye, and target something moving fast like a bird. Yes, Deadeye works for throwables somehow. They always perfectly hone in on whatever you targeted, and it's amazing every time. Dynamite turns into just a heat-seeking missile that chases a bird through the air. Violence against my avian brothers and sisters, but notable nonetheless, or it'll follow guy down the street too which is fine completely fine john marston's aim is so good that he can break down all laws of physics and this one's one of the best and easiest tricks to pull off in any of the rockstar games At 
And number eight in Final Fantasy VIII, loading up on tents. Uh, this is a game that's just made to be broken. It's pretty much built on a bazillion confusing interlocking systems, so players just have to struggle through it the first time without really knowing what to do. But once you start looking into how everything works, it becomes clear how incredibly easy it is to blow this game wide open. This little trick's where it all starts. Uh, the first thing to do, if you want to completely neuter the difficulty, is just get a bunch of money by doing the seed exams, which are not hard. And if you fail, you can just do them again. Uh, so completing all these exams gets you tons of cash. You spend it on buying a whole lot of tents. Normally, you wouldn't need a bunch of tents, but in Final Fantasy VIII, you can refine items and transform them into spells, which can be junctioned into your stats. If you have not played this game, it's all gibberish, and eh, if you have, it's still kind of gibberish. But long story short, you can give yourself a massive boost of HP right at the start of the game, making all the bosses and enemy encounters, for a big chunk of the experience, completely harmless. And that's just a start. You can do so much to kill the difficulty, but this first step is so easy it almost feels like cheating. Uh, but it's it's all built right into the game. You're supposed to use it. The developers just didn't understand the monster they were creating. And number seven is Dead Rising 2's overpowered toy spitball gun. One of the more annoying bosses in Dead Rising 2 is against the helicopter, where the trick is that you're supposed to throw a bunch of junk at a propeller to damage and then completely destroy it. It's an awkward fight where you're relying on whatever crap is lying around, but there is an unintentional way to make part of this a lot easier. All you need is this toy called the spitball gun. Normally this thing's completely harmless, it just shoots out ping pong balls that technically count as objects, so they do damage to the propeller like if you threw anything else into them. Keep in mind, regular guns don't work against this thing because bullets don't count as objects, so in this instance, the spitball gun is way more powerful than a literal machine gun, uh, which makes zero sense, but it makes for a much easier fight. And number six is Alice Madness Returns, the simply turn on the DLC trick. This couldn't have been intentional, right? Like for everything else on this list, these are tricks you could do in the game that are unintended, but uh, here it's, it's, let's just get into it. This is a lot. Alice Madness Returns was a game with DLC that you can't get anymore, but when you could, it was on EA's origin platform. Now you'd think that would mean that if people wanted access to the DLC content, they'd be screwed, right? Not so much, because for some reason, all the DLC was just included in the game, and if you wanted to activate it, all you had to do is open up an INI file in the game folder and change one value from false to true, and that is it. The DLC is literally locked by a file that you can open and edit in Notepad. It's nice for players who want to get all the stuff that's been delisted, but I feel like that can't have been intentional, right? I mean, how many times have you seen a game where the paid content can be turned on by not paying for it, but editing a text file, essentially? I, I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's pretty much unheard of. There would be no people that called this good copy protection. And number five, Resident Evil Code Veronica aiming down. If you've ever wondered why people say the knife in Resident Evil Code Veronica is overpowered, this is why. For some reason, if you aim down using the knife, it ignores all normal invincibility frames. But you, you know how knives work in these games. You swing them, they do one hit, and that's it. It's usually fairly weak. In Code Veronica, if you use the knife while aiming down, it'll hit enemies not just once, but three or four times per swing. Makes the knife almost as strong as a shotgun. And this isn't Resident Evil 4 Remake where they've added durability, so this knife is just an unstoppable killing machine. All it takes to unlock its true potential is just looking down. It, it seems like that can't be intentional to me. And number four, it's gonna be hard for me to get through this one without laughing. Um, in Heavy Rain, pressing X to Sean. One of the greatest bugs in video game history, in the game that has the best weird quick time event stuff, period. I can't imagine the devs of this game would want people doing this in the big dramatic... <laughs> I just remembered what it sounds like. No! Like, the, f the finale, the climax. The big thing! Like, during the final chapter of the game, you press X to call Sean's name, and then you select anything by pressing L2, and you trigger the cutscene while the voice clip is playing. If you do it right, you can constantly shout Sean through the entire cutscene and beyond. It's pointless, but it's one of the funniest things, period. Legitimately, like, in the in the middle of all of these sentences, I'm literally trying as hard as possible not to burst out laughing thinking of what it sounds like. 
And number three, in Final Fantasy II, just grinding with the push of a button. An old one, but it's so bizarre it's worth a mention. The experience system is totally bizarre in this game. Instead of the normal way to level up like in pretty much every other RPG ever made, it has a system kind of similar to Skyrim, where attacking makes you do more damage, casting spells makes your magic power increase, etc. It's baffling because it can be a huge pain to figure out, but hilariously, the easiest way to increase your stats is just to attack your own party members, which works just as well as attacking enemies but is a lot faster that's pretty good but there's an even easier way to grind in this game it's by using a target cancel bug basically all you do is target somebody with a physical or magical attack and they'll still get experience for it you don't even have to attack to grind in the game you just constantly select attack and back out of it over and over again it's kind of like the infinite item glitch in final fantasy 7 but perhaps more game breaking it's a ridiculous oversight that still works even in the modern remakes of the game and number two is Halo 2's Super Bounce. Half the fun of Halo 2 when it first came out was screwing around with the various bugs and exploits, but this one's probably the most fun. How it works is kind of tricky, but the basic gist of it is if you trigger a crouching glitch in certain spots, you can jump into the seams of the level, which for some reason makes your Spartan bounce very high in the air. Depending on the angle of the jump, you can send yourself halfway across the map or just fly high in the sky. But either way, it's a fun little trick that sounds difficult, but actually isn't too hard to trigger if you know what you're looking for. Cruelly, they removed this trick from the Master Chief Collection, but if you have an OG Xbox copy, the Super Bounce still works, and it's as much fun to screw around with as it used to be. And finally, at number one is Skyrim. Come on, you knew it was going to be Skyrim, or at least some Bethesda game. But uh, putting a bucket on the NPC's heads, this is one of those perfect examples of an unintended effect that devs just probably couldn't expect. You see in Skyrim, uh, it's possible to hide behind physics objects. So one intrepid player realized that, hey, if you can block line of sight with a bucket, why not put the bucket on someone's head? And surprisingly, it actually works. The game is smart smart enough to make it so that people see with their eyes, and even that their vision can be blocked by objects, but they didn't put anything in it to make it so they'll react if you put something on their heads, so NPCs just stand there oblivious with a bucket on their head, and you can just rob them blind. To Bethesda's credit, they recognize how absolutely wonderful this trick is and never removed it from the game. Uh, maybe it's a little overpowered, but it's a single player game, so who really cares? And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks